Thanks, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Before we dive into the material, I just wanted to take a moment to express our gratitude for the tremendous level of work that you have put forward to ensure that Washington residents are enrolled in health care coverage. Currently, 1.2 million Washington residents are enrolled in Apple Health programs, and this is a direct reflection of the work that you do. So thank you again. Today we are sharing information about upcoming Apple Health Magi Medicaid renewals in the Health Plan Finder. Less than a week from now will mark one year since the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, and I'm sure you all remember what an exciting time it was. We expect more excitement to come. Family, children, and new adult households that converted to the Health Plan Finder last year will need to renew their coverage in the coming months. Starting in October, we are anticipating renewing 21,720 households. In November, we are expecting around 37,000 renewals. And in December, we are expecting around 190,000 renewals. So here's what we're going to go over today. Uh, we'll do a comparison of the auto renewal process, the manual renewal process, look at processing a renewal in the health plan finder, and then some other general renewal information for you. The following applies to Apple Health Magi Medicaid recipients in the health plan finder. 60 days prior to an Apple Health recipient's renewal due date, the health plan finder system captures the individual's original application and determines whether he or she is eligible for auto renewal. Individuals will be notified whether they have been auto renewed or that they could not be auto renewed and must complete a manual renewal. So here's a brief comparison of the auto renewal process and the manual renewal process. Auto renewal occurs when various systems are able to match an individual's data and confirm ongoing eligibility. No additional information is needed from the recipient, and they are recertified for 12 months. The manual renewal process is when the system cannot confirm eligibility, eligibility via the automated data match, or the data match finds the household above the Medicaid standard. The individual must then manually complete their renewal. If the original application is determined to be eligible for the auto renewal, the individual will be sent a pre-populated notification, which is identified as the Health Plan Finder EE008, that summarizes their account, household composition, tax filing status, and other application-related information. The EE008 notification will inform the individual that their Washington Apple Health determination and enrollment has been renewed for 12 months. The notification informs the individual that they must review the information carefully. Incorrect information must be corrected by reporting required changes. They can do this either online at the Health Plan Finder website by calling the Health Plan Finder call center or by making changes to the attached for the enclosed document, and they can sign it and return it either by mail or fax to the Health Benefit Exchange. So here's an example of the cover letter of the EE008 notification, which informs the individual they have been auto-renewed and that they will continue receiving Apple Health coverage. So the arrow just points out that the information that they have been renewed and that they need to check that information and correct any if, if anything is incorrect. In the bottom left-hand corner, this is where you would find the um, identifier for the Health Plan Finder letter, which is the EE008. So this is an example of the EE008, which shows the pre-populated form that is attached. The pre-populated form includes the head of household, address, language. 
The third and fourth pages are these are all pre-populated, and they include these pages include other household members, new household members, relationships, the pregnancy questions, and also the questions for other health insurance. The final two pages have the long-term care questions, the income questions, and then the signature line. So let's review the manual renewal process. So some examples of applications that are not eligible for auto renewal are those where the automated data match shows income over the Apple Health Medicaid standard or no data match was found. If the original application is determined not eligible for auto renewal, the individual will be sent a notification, which is identified as the Health Plan Finder EE009, that informs them they must manually renew their Apple Health coverage. The individual can complete the renewal either online at the Health Plan Finder website, calling the Health Plan Finder call center, or updating the enclosed document, signing and returning either via mail or fax. The EE009 notification informs the individual they must man manually renew their health care coverage to continue receiving Apple Health. This is really the only difference between the EE008 and the EE009, and that arrow points out that information that they must um, update their information before we can determine ongoing eligibility. So let's look at how to process a renewal in the Health Plan Finder. The following is a step-by-step -step process which shows how to process an Apple Health Renewal in the Health Plan Finder when an individual has an existing account. As a reminder, Apple Health users are not required to create an account. Individuals will continue to have the option on the About You screen to skip account creation. We do encourage account creation because this helps simplify the referral process and locate the account in future visits to the Health Plan Finder. By logging into your existing account in the Health Plan Finder, click on Update My Application and Renew Coverage under the Quick Link. This option of will display 60 days prior to the end date and up to 90 days after coverage has ended for no renewal. An example of this is somebody who has a renewal due November 30th, 2014. The link will display as of October 1st and up to February 28th, 2015. Next year, you will be on the About You screen. This information will all be pre-filled. The user wants to verify that the information is correct and make any changes as needed. And then click Next. This is the primary applicant's information page. Again, this information is pre-filled. You need to verify that the information is correct and make any changes as needed. The next page is the primary applicant's taxes. This information is pre-filled from last year, so the user will need to verify again that the information is correct and make any changes as needed. This is the other household members or tax dependent screen. Again, this information is pre-filled. This is where the household members, or where new household members can be added or if the user needs to remove household members. Again, just verify the information is correct and make any changes as needed. This is the page where the relationships are set. Information is pre-filled. Uh, verify that this information is correct. And so if you've added somebody, um, this is where you would need to set that relationship and make any other changes as needed. Here's the additional questions page. So this is where someone would report a pregnancy or a change in their health insurance. But again, this information is going to be pre-filled from last year, so we just need to verify and make any changes as needed. 
These are the additional screening questions. Information, again, is pre-filled. This is for long-term care coverage or retroactive uh, health care coverage. Those questions are on this page. And you just need to verify the information is correct and make any changes as needed. Next is the household income, detail, income and deductions. This information is pre-filled. If there were any income changes, this is where the user would have to report that. The income detail screen, this information is pre-filled if the user made any changes on the income uh, and deductions page. This is where they would need to update the employer name or the change to the income. And this is the application review screen. So this is the opportunity for the user to review the application and make any necessary changes before submitting. Here's the primary applicant signature page. Um, the user must certify that they understand their rights and responsibilities, e sign the application, and then submit. And here's the eligibility results and household summary screen. This is where you would see your eligibility results for the individual and the household. This is probably all very familiar to you, but we really want to illustrate that if the user has minimal changes, this process should move smoothly as all the information is pre-filled from last year. Now we can renew, uh, review some other uh, renewal information. Many individuals have not been in Health Plan Finder since last year and may have forgotten their username or password. The following steps will show you how to recover or change this information. So this, on this page, you'll see at the bottom right hand corner the forgot your username or forgot your password. The first example that we're going to review is if the user forgot their username. The user will need to provide their email address and click Next. The username is sent via the email address that was used to create the account. If the user forgot their password, they would click on the Forgot Password link provide their username, and click Next. The Forgot Password screen will prompt you to create a new password. The user needs to type in the new password, re-enter the new password, and answer the security questions. If successful, the user will see the response on this slide. This is very similar to any web-based service account you may have used before. So as I mentioned earlier, many individuals probably created their account sometime last year with an email address that they specifically used for the health plan finder, and they may not have they don't may not remember what that email address was. An individual may contact the health plan finder call center for assistance with this. The call center representative will verify the individual's account information, such as their name, date of birth and social security number. The call center representative can provide the health plan finder username and email address and will direct them how to reset their password in the health plan finder. If the user is unsuccessful, the health plan finder call center representative can reset the health plan finder password. When processing a renewal for Apple Health when other members are active on a qualified health plan, it's important to remember not to change the answers to the following questions we will review in the next slides unless the other member no longer wishes to seek coverage through the health plan finder. As a reminder, tax credit and qualified health plan applicants are required to create an account in the health plan finder. 
On the About You page, if everyone who has coverage still wants coverage, whether they are Washington Apple Health or in a QHP, do not change the response for these two questions. Who are you applying for? Should still say myself and others. And do you want to apply for health insurance premium tax credit, cost sharing reductions, or Washington Apple Health? That question should still say yes. On the other household members or tax dependents page, if everyone who has coverage still wants coverage, whether they are Apple Health or a qualified health plan recipient, do not change the response from yes to no for the household member on the QHP. Changing these questions on either page will result in disenrollment for the QHP member. So what happens if the individual missed their renewal? 90 days after the coverage ends, if the individual is found eligible for Apple Health and the reason the coverage closed was due to no renewal, the coverage will go back to the date of termination. So there's no loss of coverage for the individual. Just some reminders about uh, age, and individuals in the health in the health plan finder turning 19 or 65. The system sends update reminders 60 days prior to the individual's birthday. Individuals turning 19 are no longer eligible for Apple Health for kids under their parents. If still income eligible for Apple Health, the individual must apply for coverage on their own application. Reminder, if an individual qualifies only for tax credit or QHP, they can remain on their parents' QHP coverage up to the age of 26. So here's a review of some of the renewal outreach strategies which HCA is conducting um, as, we, as we move into September, into October. The renewal training conducted in September for the five Apple Health Managed Care Plans and will encourage direct outreach to their members. We're also performing statewide outreach, providing stakeholder training via this webinar, renewal training presented at statewide community advocate meetings both in September and October, and a shared renewal training via email with HCA community partners and our statewide listservs. Also, the renewal process and this webinar are added to the HCA website. Here's some resource information that might be helpful um, while we move into renewals. This is a cross-agency desk aid, and many of you may have seen this before. We do provide a link in the next slides to this document, so if you haven't seen it, you can um, print a copy off for yourself or save it. And this tells which agency does what, so this will help you identify where to send somebody. HCA has placed a community-based eligibility worker in most counties across the state. Currently, we have 59 community-based eligibility staff, and we're in the process of filling the last nine, so almost every county has someone located there. These specialists can assist with answering your questions about MAGI and Medicaid eligibility. Staff are also available to assist with renewals including system issues or questions. You can find a link of updated, an updated list of these staff at the following link. The next two slides are the HCA area representatives, and you are probably familiar with who these folks are, and this is who you might contact if you had policy questions, or questions that the community-based eligibility staff were unable to assist you with. 
but we really want to encourage the use of those community-based eligibility staff. Some additional Medicaid resources. There's the HCA training and education resource page. The second link is the link to the cross-agency desk aid that we looked at earlier. The third link is the link to the community-based specialist. And then the last one is our email box where you can email Medicaid eligibility questions. Future webinars will be scheduled on an as-needed basis. The registration announcement will be sent via various email distribution lists when we have uh, set on a date. You can send suggestions for future webinars to Medicaid Expansion 2014 at hca.wa.gov. So now let's go ahead and see what kind of questions that we've received so far. Great. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so we have a lot of great questions coming in. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to all of them today, but um, let's start with question number one. Um, what is the automated data match looking for? You want to answer this, Rebecca? We also have Rebecca Janesco in the room today um, to assist with questions. So welcome, Rebecca. So again, the question is, um, what is the automated data match looking for when it's determining whether it's an auto renewal versus a manual renewal? Uh, thank you, Karen. There are several pieces of information that is sought after in the data match. Um, the main ones are income and also citizenship. And if there's any kind of question if somebody is eligible or not eligible, they always receive the um, Washington Alpha Health Renewal Notice to come in and take action to renew. So that's the EE009. Correct. Great. Let's see. Um, will a client who is needing a manual renewal show a termination date of coverage in Health Plan Finder until they complete their manual renewal? Yes. So if if this is after the, you know, the 60 days before the end of the renewal, they will show close until they've completed that renewal within the 90 days after. Okay, so um, Zach asked for us to share that it's probably worth mentioning that all clients will be unpartnered from Navigator's brokers in Health Fund Finder, so clients will be able to request assistance of a different Navigator if the one that they currently worked with or worked with last year is no longer active. It's a great point. Okay. Um, another user shares, um, we have had renewals Process within process within the 90 days and coverage did not auto retro. How do we get these fixed? This is Rebecca again. Um, it's important to note that that feature only works if somebody was terminated from MAGI coverage and is restarting on MAGI coverage. So if it's a population converting from maybe the Legacy Aces FO4 Family Medical and now they're approved for MAGI family, maybe NO1, um, that back, automatic backdating feature um, is not going to work with that population. However, if you have a, a family who did terminate for no eligibility review and it didn't automatically backdate and they're, they're continuing on MAGI coverage, please email your regional representative or contact your community-based enrollment specialist as well. Okay, let's see. Can you please clarify if Apple Health with premiums would or would not retro 90 days if terminated? So again, if the um, eligibility ended because they did not complete their renewal, um, it would go back to the date of termination. 
um, if it terminated for um, non-payment of premiums, that also uh, also goes back to the date of termination once they pay their premiums. So. Okay, let's see. How do you how do you process a renewal that is not a annual renewal, which I think maybe they meant, let's see, how do you do a renewal that is not an annual renewal, such as a client was just released from jail and Apple Health had been suspended while they were incarcerated? The Health Plan Finder approval is still active, but the pro but provider one is not. So for that individual, you may want to try to start an application or create an application um, to see if that goes through. It may be another issue um, unique to that case or that account. So if that is unsuccessful, please contact um, your available resources for additional help. What if a 19-year-old is still on their parents' taxes? And then we also have a follow-up question to that, too. So let's maybe catch both of them. And then, um, so the question is, is it that they may, the 19-year-old may remain under their parents' qualified health plan, or is it that they must remain under their parents' qualified health plan? So I think that if, um, if a 19-year-old is still on their parents' taxes, if they do, like, like Amy shared, if they do qualify for Medicaid, then they would need to, in the existing parent's uh, application, they would need to enter the application and say that they are no longer seeking coverage, but they would still remain um, as part of the household and be, um, because they are still a tax dependent of their parents. And then the 19-year-old would be required to, if they do qualify for Apple Health, then they would need to apply for um, Medicaid in-health plan finder on their own. And then whether they may remain under their parents' qualified health plan or they must remain under their parents' qualified health plan, I believe that that would be a question we would need to direct to the health benefit exchange to obtain clarification. So Andrew, if you wanted to um, email that question to me at medicaidexpansion2014 at hca.wa.gov, I'd be happy to pass that on to our partners over at Health Benefit Exchange. Okay. Um, let's see. How long does it take for a renewal to show up in Provider 1? So the um, renewal would be uh, updated in Provider 1 overnight. Any changes in coverage take effect the next business day. Next day, excuse me. Okay, just a moment, guys. There's tons of questions, so it'll be just a minute here. Okay, so if a client calls a community-based specialist to process their renewal um, and they don't access their online account, will that client get renewed or do they have to call, this says, do they have to call the Medical Assistance Customer Service Center at Healthcare Authority, but I think they might mean do they call MEDS, which is the Medicaid Eligibility Determination Services. So if the, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So if a client calls a community-based staff person to get a renewal process as they don't access their online account, so they're needing, if they're asking for assistance to the community-based specialist, Will that client get renewed, or do they have to call to the health care authority? The client in the, the community-based eligibility staff should be able to help them with their renewal. Okay, so a follow-up question to the 19-year-old. How can the 19-year-old start their own application when they are on their parents' application? Historically, there's been an error message when someone is in two applications in Health Plan Finder. 
Um, there was just a Health Sign Finder release 1.4 that I believe was processed over this last weekend, and that um, is supposed to have eliminated the separating applications problem. Um, we haven't actually been able to test cases yet, um, so we don't have confirmation that it is actually working, um, but so it, that should have eliminated the problem. Okay, let's see. Oh, and we have Chris Brown on the line from Health Benefit Exchange, and she shares with us about the 19-year-old, um, that the 19-year-old may stay on parent qualified health plan whether or not they are claimed on the parent's taxes. Thanks, Chris. Okay, let's see. Okay, if a client had problems with their application last year and they never resolve the issues, will it affect their application this year? No, it will not. They will be able to create an application um, from scratch and um, finish the application. Okay, and I'm getting a lot of questions regarding qualified health plans and the health benefit exchange, and unfortunately we don't have a representative with us um, here in the room from the health benefit exchange, so we're not going to be able to answer those questions today. Okay, does a person who has an auto renewal and receives health plan finder notification EE008 are they, do they need to sign that form and send it back? No, nope, they don't need to do anything. If they've reviewed the information that's pre-filled and it looks correct, they don't need to take any further steps. Okay. When we are in Health Plan Finder and processing a manual renewal, would we have any issues if we complete more than one information modification or if we make more than one change? And what about an address change? We encourage you to make all applicable changes on the application at the same time. Um, for most changes, if not all, you shouldn't have any problems reporting the information. So again, we encourage you to make all the changes at the same time. Okay. So during the renewal process, the question on the application regarding the unpaid medical expenses how does this affect their eligibility? Let me scroll to that question on the application flow, just so everyone knows we're on the same page. So here's the question that the uh, person was talking about, the one at the bottom. It does not affect um, somebody's application um, or eligibility. Um, this is information that the healthcare authority uses for retroactive medical processing. But if you're completing a renewal for somebody and they have unpaid medical bills, it's potentially not covered by Medicaid. Um, so we would not be sending a form to this person um, for Washington Apple Health. Okay, so we've got a question about managed care plans. Are the managed care plans able to see or know who is auto-renewed versus manually renewed, or will they be reaching out, uh, will they be conducting outreach to all their members who need to be renewed? And um, we're currently working on a report right now, and so that actually, um, that subject is actually up for discussion right now. So we're trying to um, determine if we can provide the managed care plans with just lists of those who need to be manually renewed. Um, but again, that's um, still probably another week or so out. Can you please share more information specifically how the medical assistance workers or community-based specialists will be able to either help or not help with renewals and can they see clients? So the community-based specialists um, are actually available to assist with renewals. Um, they specifically, um, more importantly, um, when someone has actually gone in and processed online and actually has received a system error, 
um, they're actually trained to assist with those renewals. Okay, so lawful aliens who are under five, under the five, within the five-year bar or waiting their five-year bar um, and are over 65 years old, where should they go to apply for health insurance? Through Health Plan Finder or through DSHS? Through DSHS is a program called Medical Care Services, and they can apply for that program there. Okay, and then also um, many folks are asking if um, the slides um, can be shared, and they are currently available. Um, Rebecca, can you go ahead and go to the last slide where we shared the additional resources right before the question slide? So um, currently, uh, so at this top link, um, hca.wa.gov slash hcr slash me, pages slash training underscore education dot ASPX. That's where you can go right now today and under the tab re under resources and then Medicaid enrollment, there are PowerPoint slides for the Apple Health renewal process. And then, um, so those are available right now today. And then some of you also may have received received those today or um, maybe by tomorrow um, that have been sent out through our area um, email distribution lists and listservs. And then in about 10 days or so, um, the presentation today will be, the recorded presentation and the PowerPoint slides will be located on that same training and education webpage. And they'll be down just a little bit further under um, webinars. Okay. Is every client that is eligible for Washington Apple Health going to have a renewal or auto renewal even if they just recently signed up for Washington Apple Health? So if they recently signed up for Washington Apple Health, then their renewal will be due 12 months from the first of the month that they were approved. Okay, so if someone goes in to renew their coverage for Washington Apple Health, but there are other people on their account who are not due for a renewal, will the others renew at the same time? The intent is to renew all of the um, household members um, so that the certification end dates line up. Um, it's unfortunately not functioning as designed for all households and we continue to explore that. Can people have Apple Health as secondary insurance? Yes. Yeah. They sure can. Um, they can um, they, they, can have, they can have both. If they're eligible for no-cost Apple Health, they can also have secondary insurance. Of course, Medicaid is the payer of last resort, though. If someone qualifies, though, for the CHIP program or the Apple Health for Kids with premiums, they cannot have other insurance. So that is the only program um, for Apple Health where you cannot have. Okay, so if more than 90 days have passed and, um, after the um, certification period ended and the case was closed because there was no renewal, um, what would be the process for someone to sign up again? So they would need to create a new application in the Health Plan Finder and their coverage begin date would begin the first of the month of when they applied. 
I'd like to just add on that if they have unpaid medical bills for the, the month prior to the month of application, they do want to mark that they have unpaid medical bills and they can be assessed for eligibility um, under the retroactive process. Good point. So today one of our advocates was told that we are no longer allowed to call the HCA meds unit at 855-623-9357 to receive updates on cases that we're working on, but now to call the area representatives. Is this correct? No. I'm not sure where that information is coming from, um, but med staff can still answer questions. Uh, we really don't want to direct a lot of questions to our area representatives because that's not their primary function. Community-based eligibility staff will also be available to answer those kinds of questions. Okay, so it looks like we are about at the end of our um, questions. Oh, actually, one more. One more. Um, so if people call DSHS or go to a local CSO, will they be assisted with renewal? And what is DSHS's process? So if, um, if a client does go to DSHS or to a, lo um, or to a local CSO to project, process a MAGI Medicaid um, renewal, they actually would be directed um, to process that renewal either online or um, contact the Health Plan Finder Customer Support Center or um, mail in their actually EE009 and um, sign and make the changes and then send that in. Um, DSHS covers currently just classic Medicaid renewals and that includes um, aged, blind, disabled, or those folks who need long-term care support services. And so um, those would, they would continue to receive um, renewal reminders 45 days in advance. Um, the renewal process for those, that population has not changed. So they would continue to go to DSHS. But if it's a MAGI Medicaid, so family, pregnancy, um, adult, um, or family coverage, they would actually um, go through the Washington Health Plan Finder. If a client did not renew their coverage timely and their coverage has now terminated, do they have to create a new account in Health Plan Finder? No, they should not have to create a new account. They would need to create a new application. Actually, go ahead and leave it on there. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. Um, again, on this slide, we share um, the training and education resources webpage, which has a lot of um, information such as prior webinars, Medicaid enrollment resources, um, our community-based training, and then um, Healthcare Authority Apple Health publications. And again, the next link is the cross-agency desk aid. That was the, the colorful. Um, the colorful slide that we showed that we couldn't read very well, but that did li does list um, the different um, cross agencies um, such as DSHS, Health Benefit Exchange, and Healthcare Authority, and you can see um, what types of what types of um, things that we can assist you with, and then provides all the um, access through like web portals and also via phone. And then um, next is the link to the Healthcare Authority community-based specialist who can assist with renewal. And then again, um, lastly, is the Medicaid expansion 2014 at hca.wa.gov, and that's available for any questions you may have about this webinar or about Magic Medicaid um, questions. And we thank you for joining.